Hey everybody, so this is a review of the iPad Pro 2018 and I'm going to talk about why it's going to be my portable work machine for the near future. I think it's quite telling that I've decided to make the iPad Pro my, my actual on-the-go work machine because if you're familiar with my work, you know I'm actually not a fan of Apple products, particularly iOS. I always prefer to use an Android over an iPhone. The only reason I use an iPhone every now and then it's because that phone has a really good video camera and the Apple Watch is really great. It's a little bit ironic for me to say. It's funny I have to say this because about two weeks ago I made a video comparing the cameras of the Huawei Mate 20 Pro and the iPhone XS Max and I gave the slight edge to the iPhone XS Max because um, it was much better in video recording and the camera produced a little bit more natural photos whereas Huawei photos tend to be overprocessed. And what I didn't expect was for Huawei fans to come in and get really angry with me. They basically downvoted or disliked my video and then left all these angry comments accusing me of being a fanboy saying that, oh, Apple probably paid you, huh? And some of them were really immature, like cussing at me, saying like, fuck you and all that. Like they're really, really dumb because if they really paid attention to my videos, they would know I'm actually a big fan of Huawei stuff. I named the Huawei Mate 10 Pro as my favorite phone of 2017. And, and just a week ago, Huawei flew me to London for the phone launch. So, you know, how am I being paid by Apple if Huawei is flying me to places too? So anyway, back to the iPad Pro. I've been using this for about a week now and I'm really, really loving it. First, just for this modern design. Now, Apple keeps calling this an edge-to-edge -edge display. It's not quite edge-to-edge, -edge, but this is pretty immersive, particularly because this display has a 120 hertz refresh rate. So that's the same refresh rate as on the Razer phone. So if you remember my review of that, it's just everything is super smooth. When you're scrolling between this iPad and an older iPad, or even a smartphone, you'll see the difference. Everything is just a little bit smoother here because the screen is refreshing at twice the speed. So everything, it's like double the animation. Second of all, this chipset H12X Bionic is actually really, really freaking powerful. In Geekbench, it scored like an 18,000 in multi-core. It's more powerful than 90% of the laptops available out right now and actually more powerful than a lot of Apple's own MacBooks. So I edit video with LumaFusion and I shoot videos in 4K30. And this device is so powerful that it's able to output 4K 30 FPS videos in just about real time. So if the video is six minutes long, that means the output time, it's about six minutes and everything is super smooth. So right now I am scrubbing through a 4K video and I'm scrubbing through it and you look at, there's no stutter. Everything is moving just in real time. On the older iPad Pro that I edit my videos, when I scrub, there's a little bit of a delay. Or if I go too fast like this, the video will not be able to catch up. So the main reason I use an iPad Pro instead of a Windows laptop, it's because apps are better developed for iOS. That's just the nature of it. App developers always prioritize iOS because there's more money to be made. So I edit videos a lot, as you guys should be aware, and I usually do it on LumaFusion. I also use Final Cut Pro, but that's a little bit too advanced for me because obviously I'm a very basic amateur YouTuber. I'm not like making really complicated videos like MKBHD. You know, he will need something like Final Cut Pro. For me, LumaFusion on iPad, it's actually really awesome and really useful. And I actually really like using my finger to edit video. So whether it's scrubbing through the timeline or just cutting clips and moving it around or like dragging the slider to, to make a clip shorter or longer, you know, moving clips from the library into the file, the timeline, it's just, it's really intuitive to use my finger. So even little things like just going into my photo album and dragging photos into Google Drive, it feels very natural to me, very immersive. It's very natural. I mean, think about it. If you watch any movie set in the future or with like crazy technology and you see the main character use a computer, he's almost never using like a mouse. He's always like just using his hand to grab things that are hovering in front of him and moving it left and right. Like Tony Stark in the Marvel movies, his, he always just uses his hand to move things around. So using an iPad Pro kind of gives you a little bit of that feeling. And this is what Apple has envisioned. It's something like the future. Now keep in mind, I am not an Apple fanboy. I don't like using iPhones. If you watch my MacBook Pro review, 
I trash the keyboard a lot. I'm not one of those guys who, who's decked out in Apple logos head to toe and always have an AirPod on me. So I'm just telling it like it is. I think Apple's vision with the iPad Pro is on point. It is the future of computing. So LumaFusion, it's a better video editing app than anything I have seen or encountered on Windows. I have tried. I purchased PowerDirector on Windows and it's just not as good as LumaFusion. And I also really like Pixelmator for photo editing. It's just, again, it's not the most professional photo editing tool. An actual professional will use something like Adobe Lightroom. But I am a beginner, and for a beginner, it's actually good to just use something more basic like this. So I'll give you an example. So I took this photo of the iPad Pro, I overexposed the shot because I shot this with a real camera and I'm just not that good a photographer. So I'm able to go into retouch, darken, and then just use my finger to run through the photo. And it kind of looks a little bit better now. Like, it's still not the greatest image, but now if I post this image to Instagram, or even use it as my YouTube video cover, it looks respectable. It doesn't look too bad, right? Like the overexposure has been fixed. So I know there are apps like this on Android or PC, but it's not as good as Pixelmator on iOS because app makers just focus more on iPads and iPhones. It is what it is. But while the iPad Pro works for me as a computer, it will not work for everyone. There are some major shortcomings. This thing uses USB-C now, which is awesome because USB-C is better than Lightning, but this is a crippled USB-C port, so it does not support external storage. So I cannot just use a USB thumb drive, stick it in, and move files into the drive, or move files from the drive into there. There is no real file storage system within the iPad Pro. There is a files app, but it's kind of really crippled. You need iCloud mostly to get everything to work. If you're not fully immersed in Apple's ecosystem, which I am not because I am an Android guy usually, the file system is useless. So there is no real file system in here. So that means a lot of basic computer tasks. Like if you get an attachment in Gmail, I can't quite save the attachment into my iPad to view later. I have to always just leave it in Gmail and view it later like that. So that's a major disadvantage. But for my workflow, I can deal with the shortcomings because I am mainly a writer. So I write for Forbes, some of you guys know. In addition, I also write for the South China Morning Post. I actually wrote a new piece today on Stan Lee and his, um, the Asian characters that he created. And I also review movies. I'm on Rotten Tomatoes, I'm a registered film critic. So I'm mainly a writer and I do YouTube on the side. So as I already mentioned, I edit videos of LumaFusion. And I shoot a lot of my videos on with an iPhone just because it's like the most dummy proof video camera because it focuses fast and it's almost always smooth and it finds exposure properly compared to something like if I use a real camera. There's a lot of settings I have to tweak. So I do use a real camera when I go out and about to shoot, but when I'm shooting this at home, I'm using an iPhone because it's more than good enough. So if I shoot with an iPhone, I can send all video files to the iPad really fast via AirDrop and then I just drag and drop into here and I'm editing with my finger and I output really fast and I upload to YouTube directly. So my, in terms of video, the iPad Pro is perfect for it. In terms of writing, I actually kind of like this keyboard. Apple's improved the smart keyboard a little bit by allowing for more angles. So now you get two angles. I know third party keyboards can give you more angles, but this is really thin, really light. And two angles is enough for me because I work either at a desk or on my lap and both of these angle fit so i've been doing all my writing on this i mean sure i can still get a little bit more work done if i go on my computer setup in my room when i have two monitors or if i use a laptop a proper windows laptop where i can open three windows at once but to be honest i don't quite need three windows at once nowadays i only need two and apple now lets me do that ever since ios 11 allowed split screen multitasking I could not use an iPad for work before iOS 11 because you can only open one app at a time and it was just too restricting. But now that I can open two apps at a time, that's good enough for me because I'll be here writing an article and right here I can be watching a YouTube video for reference or surfing the internet looking for some um, like reference for me to, to put into my article. And if you really need, you're also able to open a third app via slide over. So this method, it's not that... Um, intuitive so basically you still really have just two apps running at the same time but it's just you're able to slide over a third app like this 
So I also want to talk a little bit about the Apple Pencil. This has been much improved. It now can be charged via just snapping onto the top of the tablet instead of the old Apple Pencil, which required charging by plugging into the lightning port, which is really dumb. So I think Apple products, they're really, really expensive, but there's a reason creative professionals like using them because they do kind of inspire you to get a little bit creative. So I used to draw a lot as a child. It used to be one of my childhood hobbies, but I kind of gave up on that as I got older, just like because that's natural. People, you get older, you move on from hobbies as a kid. The Apple Pencil is so good. There's almost no lag to the human eye and you can sense so many different layers of pressure. So you can go light or go harder and you see the stroke gets darker. So it's such a good intuitive drawing tool. It has inspired me to draw again. Like I, I've begun sketching again. Now, obviously I'm not a professional artist. My art is very average, but just the fact that the Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro has inspired me to reignite my childhood passion of drawing. In fact, a couple of years ago, so I drew this in 2015 with the first iPad Pro. I drew a comic for my girlfriend celebrating our anniversary. So this is supposed to be me. This is supposed to be her. This is me and her again. And you know, and she loved this. So iPad Pro and Apple Pencil inspired me to draw this. If I drew this on a regular notebook and pencil, I probably would have given up because I made a lot of mistakes and it's hard to correct mistakes when you're drawing with a pen on a paper. But on a digital device, I can erase, I can change, I can, you know, swap out the order of the panels if I need. So again, the iPad Pro, it's really expensive and Apple's greedy as hell. For some reason, Apple made the iPad Pro 2 only compatible with the new iPad. So if you are using, so if you have an older Apple Pencil, you cannot use it on this new iPad Pro and vice versa. If you have this pencil, you cannot use it on the older iPad Pro. So Apple is greedy as hell as usual, but I have to give them credit where credit is due. This pencil, it's the best mainstream stylus out there. It's better than anything Samsung or Google offers and has helped me rediscover my childhood passion. So these new iPad Pros have four speakers and they're just about the best speakers in any portable device. And Apple's also made it really smart. So the iPad Pro knows to pump out highs and mids from the top two speakers while the bass will come out from the bottom speaker. So no matter how you flip the tablet, like the sound will adjust. So now I flip it this way, then highs and mids will come out from here, whereas bass will come out from the bottom. And it's a very good, very loud speaker. So when I flip it, the speakers adjust. So this display is obviously awesome. And this is obviously a great media consumption device just by virtue of having such a great screen. Now, unfortunately, there is no headphone jack and Apple didn't even give you a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter dongle because Apple's greedy as hell. So you'll have to use Bluetooth earphones and you have to use something good like Bluetooth 5.0 because otherwise there will be a lag between visual and audio. So you'll probably have to invest in a good pair of USB-C earbuds or just buy really nice Bluetooth earphones. So it's unfortunate that um, an iPad Pro is like a luxury item. You have to spend a lot of money on it. But if you can spend the money, this is an awesome media consumption device. And of course, gaming is awesome because this chipset is so powerful. It's way more powerful than anything in Android. The benchmark score just completely kills the Snapdragon 845 or the Kirin 980. So there's also a camera on the back with a pretty sizable camera bump and with the camera, you're able to, ha, <laughs> just kidding. I'm not gonna review the camera on a freaking iPad. Don't be those ridiculous people who carries an iPad in public to take photos. Those people look ridiculous and I will never be one of those people. So there's a camera on the back, which I will never ever use. Oh, I can't believe I haven't even covered this yet, but um, the new iPads obviously have no home button, no fingerprint reader, because it uses Face ID. It's actually smarter than the Face ID in iPhones because it works in any orientation. So it works just like this. So it will also work if I tilt it in portrait orientation. It takes a little bit longer to adjust and it will also work if it's upside down. So the Face ID is smart enough to recognize my face no matter what direction it is in. The iPhone 10 and 10s cannot do that. So this is a better Face ID than what's on iPhone and there's no notch because the design is symmetrical. So bottom line, no matter how you look at it, these iPad Pros are really powerful, really beautiful, really awesome devices. Now, yeah, if you are a old school computer user, you need a file directory, you need external storage, 
then it's not for you. And this thing, it's really crippled right here that pisses me off. But Apple did not design the iPad Pro for those people. Apple designed the iPad Pro for creatives and for people who who like to think they are kind of like one step ahead in terms of future. And the iPad Pro to me is the future of computing. So I think in the future, people don't really need file directories or like storage in the computers because everything will be done in the clouds. There will be a file directory in the clouds for you to access. People don't need to be sticking the USB thumbstick. It just feels a little bit outdated, right? Like think about it again, if you watch like Iron Man, like Tony Stark's not gonna be like, Jarvis, let me plug in this USB stick before you can give me the information. Jarvis just knows. Obviously that's the future, but it's likely that's gonna be how we use computers. We'll be grabbing things with our hand, moving things with our finger, and everything will be in the cloud. So you just have one clean, thin device that can just do everything because it's always connected. So I think this is a vision of that future. If you're using it today in 2018, yes, you do have to compromise and sacrifice in some bits. But if you are a gadget nerd and you have the money to spend, I think you are okay with that because it, I mean, I gotta admit, I'm being really superficial here, but it does feel really damn cool to be moving shit around my finger, to be just using a stylus with really good sensitivity and just have a device this thin, this powerful, and it doesn't heat up at all. There's no fan noise. It is super thin and the whole thing feels like a piece of like jewel. It's just, it's really nice. Now, I know I'm coming off like an Apple fanboy, but again, if you watch my videos, if you know my work, you know I'm usually not that big on Apple products, but I really truly feel like the iPad Pro is Apple's best product. Now, obviously these are really expensive. I believe the base model starts at $9.99 and that's just for the iPad Pro without the keyboard or the pencil, which I think most people will need to take most full advantage of it. And the base model only comes with 64 gigs of internal storage, which is pretty useless in 2018. That's not good enough. So you're probably gonna have to buy the next configuration up, which is 256, and it gets a lot ex more expensive. You buy the 256 model iPad Pro, you get the pencil, you get the keyboard, it comes out to like $1,500. Yeah, that's a lot of money. But again, if you're a creative professional, you're probably willing to pay that price. And I guarantee you, if you walk into San Francisco or Tokyo or any like kind of high earning fancy cities in a few months, you walk into a coffee shop, you're gonna see a lot of people using these. And I might just be one of them. So yeah, this is the iPad Pro review. It's a little bit all over the place. Apologies for that. Thank you for watching.